Good morning, everyone. Welcome to pre-service prayer. Uh, my name is Kayan from IP. Thank you for joining us this morning for our last pre-service prayer as we close off 2020. So before I start, I just want to share one um, Bible verse that I came along during my morning devotions. It's from 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So with that, let's pray. Dear me, Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, uh, for this season of Thanksgiving, uh, you know, celebrating Christmas, or for those who are able to gather with our fellow SPS or even with our family during this period of time. I thank you, Lord, that you have kept us safe, you have kept us healthy, and thank you for protecting even our family members from far and near. And thank you, Lord, that in all things, um, we are able to have a community, have a support system, and just really being able to just get through each day as it comes. So Lord, as we prepare our hearts to pray, um, as we close off 2020, I pray that Lord, that um, yeah, we'll continue to be really anchored. We'll continue to run and pursue you and seek after your heart. And I just want to commit this time into your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning, I just have four points. Um, I'll start off the first one. The prayer is for ourselves. Um, yeah, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, that um, as we close off 2020 and as we prepare our hearts um, by next Sunday uh, for our corporate prayer and fast, I pray a lot that we are able to find some time alone to come to the point of stillness, to come to the point of just total surrender and not just a time of reflection, not just a time of, you know, what to pray for, but really come to that place of just being in your presence to seek your heart, to seek what you have um, to reveal to us, the things that you have put on our heart, be it to contend over, to pray over, to forgive, to give thanks for, to just be reminded of the things that you may have on our hearts. I pray a lot that... Um, with clean hands and pure hearts, we are able to come to the throne of grace with our eyes, you know, the skills of our eyes to be able to just be removed for the calluses of our heart to be softened during this period of time as we prepare for the next 21 days of prayer and fast. I pray that Lord for the grievances and our hurts, our sorrows, our pains, and even every other trench that we would have or may had already went through. I pray that Lord that we'll continue to revive our hearts, restore the childlike faith, to return um, the hope that we feel that we might have lost. I pray that Lord we'll be able to just, yeah, to really come back, to find back the hope, to find back that anchor, to find back that, um, yeah, that place whereby we are able to to be so still, like the Marys, like um, the Hannahs, like, you know, the King Davids or even Pauls. I just pray that Lord that it will be a beautiful time of us just, um, being drenched in your love, being drenched in worship, and just being drenched in your grace and mercy. And I just pray that Lord protect our mind, protect our hearts, protect our eyes, protect our, our speech, um, especially during this period of time as we prepare our hearts for the prayer, corporate and fast. And I just want to commit this precious moment um, as we cross over to 2021 into your hands and even being reminded of the vision that PCM has given us and I just commit and I uplift this period of time. The families, um, the singles, the young professionals, um, the people staying at home with their parents. I just want to commit each and every one of us into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The second one that I want to pray for is for our family. Um, yeah, let's take some time. Dear me, Father, um, I'm just reminded of all the prayers that we have been praying for, be it um, for healing, be it for salvation, be it for forgiveness, be it for um, just having enough grace and mercy to love 
those around us, which is the closest around us, uh, even if they may be here with us physically in the same household, or be it for our family members that we can't be reunited for another, I don't know, six six months or more. I just pray a lot that protect our families, um, protect the unity within the family, protect our loved ones, um, protect just our hearts, the words that we speak, when we've spoken out of love, the prayers that we contend for, um, we won't give out on the prayers, um, for the grace that we need when we may, um, at that snap, we may not have. I just really pray that Lord, that you protect the family unit, protect the marriages, um, protect the children and parents, um, protect the singles, protect each and every one of us individuals. And yeah, you know, the, the unit, the, the family unit is always the most vulnerable sometimes. But I know that God, you love us so much that you will not want anything um, to be stolen away. So I pray a lot for protection over families. I pray a lot that your love, your covering, and your web of grace, your web of mercy will just cover each and every household. Yeah, and I just pray for wisdom and discernment as we are sort of light to our own family members. I pray a lot that we'll never forget that um, we don't use our own wisdom, but we lean on to you first as you speak words of grace um, towards our family, to love those who may be struggling, um, to have strength, to pray when um, we may not have the courage to pray anymore. And I thank you Lord for just loving us, even the spiritual families too that we have. And I'm thankful Lord for, for spiritual families. So I just want to commit um, family to your hands and for the support that we have, even when we may not see our family members physically. But I know that God, you are there. So I commit them into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, the next point that I have is really to pray for our nation, the nations around us, and just for the COVID situation. Yeah. Um, tell me, Father, um, it's been one year into COVID. Um, some of us have lost our family members abruptly, suddenly, due to COVID. Um, and even with the new strain of COVID, um, and with some of us who come travel back during this season um, because of COVID, I just pray that Lord, that thank you Lord first for the researchers that just tirelessly try to find a vaccine. Um, and I just want to pray for each and every individual, the nations, the world, the people um, who, who may or may not have access to vaccine, who may or may not have access to healthcare. I just pray Lord that um, I just want to pray for hope. I just pray that even for those who may be struggling alone um, due to COVID, be in the States, be in the rural, just any single country out there, I just pray that Lord, you will send strength to the healthcare workers. You will send hope to family members who can't be there for 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 family members who who um who have passed on due to COVID or who 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 are suffering uh, due to COVID. And I just pray that a lot that um, the world needs a lot of hope. We need hope. And I know that Lord, um, your hope is free. Your grace is free. Your love is free. And I pray that everyone in every single corner of this world will be able to experience some love. Be it in a cold season, be it a hot season. Um, I just know that God, you, you love us so much. You love us so much. Yeah, yeah. I just pray that a lot. That um, take care of everyone out there. Um, who, who? Yeah, just take care of everyone out there who might not have um, healthcare access. Yeah, and thank you all for loving us so much. So I commit our nations into your hands. Those who have support and who doesn't have support, and for our leaders of the world to have the wisdom and the strong team to decide on what protocols to take to take care of the people 
um, just commit that into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And, and lastly, Lord, I just want to pray for our final service. Yeah, let's take some time. Lord, I just want to thank you all for our hearts. Um, whoever is able to dial in this morning, uh, families or house churches who are gathered at different houses, I just pray that Lord will prepare our hearts to worship a final hoo-ha. Uh, no, not hoo-ha. Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to worship together with our community, be with our family and friends. And I pray that our hearts will also be ready to receive the word that's going to be spoken over today. And I thank you, Lord, that as we prepare our hearts to get back into the service, even though we're entering phase three, I know that God, um, everything is just divine in your own time. And God, your economy of time is always different from us. So Lord, I just want to pray for the service today that, you know, Ah, we're going to just be excited to cross over 2021, even though it's very unpredictable because we know that God, you are here with us in every single journey, in every single part. And I just pray that Lord, we are able to just worship freely with total abandonment, with clean hand, pure heart, and just say hallelujah, ha Jehovah Jireh, you are a counsellor, you are just so amazing. And and yeah, just to be drenched with, with that beautiful love of our Abba Father and that we'll be encouraged by the word that's going to be spoken today and I pray that Lord that as we close off 2020 um, thank you Abba Father for being so faithful and as we prepare our hearts for 2021 for our prayer and fast we will not give up on hope because you haven't given up on us so I just commit everything to your hands we love you so much and thank you for loving us, never abandoning us, never forgot, forgetting us or forsaken us. So with that, I just commit all this into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the last service of 2020. Wow, I, I really can't believe it's the end of 2020, but it has been um, an interesting year, but still, um, as I'm reflecting this um, year, I realize that everything in this world can really change. You know, we can't rely so much on our job, our finance, or even our health. Anything can change in a, in a day. It's really not in our control, but really only God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God never changes. So yeah, we just want to give thanks to God for His goodness. Um, yeah, His everlasting goodness and love for us and never ever changes. Um, yeah, so... Um, Let's open the service with a creed. Yeah. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing of the goodness of God together. of 
the goodness of God. Let's sing that again. Running game. 
Hands to grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding The power set me free There is a cross that bears the burden for me There is another in the fire All my day left for death beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sea
for your love thank you for your grace in taking us through this year 2020 and for a lot of us it's been a season of fire it's been a season of storm but Lord we know that you are there with us you'll always be there with us God we thank you we bring you glory and honour we love you and all God's people say, Amen. Good morning and welcome to Solomon's Porch. My name is Pastor Sam Kim and we are so excited that you guys can join us today for our Sunday service, uh, our last service of the year. I have a handful of uh, quick announcements to make before we get into the message. Uh, just a reminder that this week on New Year's Eve, uh, we're coming together with house church members and we're going to have a nice fun evening of uh, competition and games and a potluck. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to lead the church and usher in the new year as we do every year with prayer and worship. And uh, so what better way to start off the year than uh, or at the end of the year and start off the year by coming together uh, in your church family community uh, uh, within your house churches for those of you who can make it and uh, just a fantastic time uh, of some uh, games activities some fantastic food and fellowship and then we're going to usher in close the year and usher in the new year in the presence of God uh, uh, in prayer and worship and uh, just kick off the new year and start the new year right um, so please uh, uh, look for more information on that and join us this week. Um, also, our 21-day annual fast is beginning on January 3rd. It's a Sunday, uh, which is this coming Sunday. And so we're going to kick off uh, 2021, uh, the 21-day fast on a Sunday, January 3rd. And then January 4th, which is a Monday, and every weekday morning, we're going to be meeting at 7 a.m. at Treehouse. And uh, space is limited, a maximum of 50 individuals. And we'll be coming together for a time of devotional uh, uh, reflection, uh, uh, meditation, and worship. And uh, so please come and join us. Uh, the start of every day, we want to give it to the Lord. Uh, the start of the year, we want to commit that to the Lord. And just really come hungry before God, you know, physically and spiritually. And uh, our, our desire and intent is to meet together and to meet with God. And so please keep that marked and join us uh, uh, weekdays. You're going to have to sign up online, uh, pre-registration as we do for our Sunday services. And also super, super excited. If you haven't heard the news already, uh, starting in 2021 on January 3rd, uh, we're going to have every Sunday weekly in-person Sunday services at the uh, Furama Hotel. And so we're really excited for that. We're going to start off with uh, 50... Uh, we hope to expand that a little bit, eventually get to 100. And uh, we got uh, fantastic news that we can now go to 150 and even 200. Uh, and so please join us, be a part of that in person, uh, meeting together, meeting with the Lord. And uh, we are very much hoping that by February we can start introducing uh, some of our children's ministry uh, classes and classrooms. And so just uh, really excited for the new year and everything that God has in store for you and for your community here at SP. Uh, so some, some key dates to keep in mind. Uh, please mark them down. The title of my sermon today is called uh, On Your Mark, Get Ready, Set, Go. I was watching this video not too long ago uh, of Olympic swimmers as a competition and they had uh, all these uh, uh, swimmers on the platform and you know there's a queue and then when it goes off everyone jumps and then they compete you know in their in their race and it was a, it was it was really heart-wrenching because I, I saw this individual and they were all lined up and then there's a get set there's a you know get ready and then there's a there's a beep or a gun and then they launch off and one of the swimmers 
had launched off too soon before everyone else had and before the, the mark was you know, made. And uh, as soon as he jumped in, he knew he made a mistake. Uh, he was slapping the water, just really upset. You know, he came out of the pool. Uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was noticeable that he was crying. Uh, he had to exit. And uh, he, he basically had a false start and was disqualified or, or you know, deducted points. And uh, eventually he did come back and they let him compete. Uh, but, but it was just a really, really sad picture. You know, this idea of, uh, you know, on your mark, uh, get ready, set, go. Uh, I had a kind of a more leisurely uh, swim race just amongst uh, uh, other, other, other swimmers uh, last Sunday. And uh, we split up into two teams about, uh, I think it was around uh, four or five people on each side separately. There's a clear demarcation. And we did a, a relay race. And I was the first person on my team to go. And I'm, and I'm probably out of like 20 people, I'm probably like the third or fourth last, you know, uh, uh, swimmer. You know, I just don't have the lungs that I used to have. Um, but I gave it my best. I knew I had to get a good start. And so I got down. And then when the coach said go, jumped in. And I swam my heart out as fast as I could, held my breath. And I, and I made it to the end and before the next person would go. And I got up and I said, did I, did I beat my guy? Did I beat the guy that I was racing against? And uh, sure enough, uh, you know, the guy said yes, and I was so excited. Uh, eventually, we would lose the relay race. Our team lost, but, but I won. I, I beat the guy that I was racing, and so I was just really excited. Um, but, you know, having a good start, you know, getting set on your mark, getting ready, and then launching off. And, and I thought this was a great picture uh, as we close out the year in 2020, and as we get ready and get set for 2021, you know, I want to help us kind of gear up and a good start or a great start has a lot, a lot to do with winning a race or, or you, know, uh, uh, you know, having an advantage in a race. And so, you know, as your spiritual leader and as your pastor, you know, as a, as a church, I want to, you know, for all the things that have happened in, in you know, 2020, I want to help orientate and, and start preparing us so that, so that we're in a position as we start 2021, that every single one of you would be in a great position to start and launch out into that. Um, you know, I mentioned a couple weeks ago we're going into our, our uh, season of fasting as a church and, you know, we're closing out, you know, today's the last Sunday of the year and there's, there's so much to think about, there's, there's so much to reflect on and, and all, the, all the blessings that God has blessed us with and, and still at the same time the struggles and the losses of 2020 and some of us are still contending and, and I wanted to take a moment and pause uh, for myself and for our church community and, and, and for you guys and and for those we know, you know, we've, we've lost loved ones this year. We, you know, we've lost loved ones this year. Uh, we know of people who have lost loved ones this year. It was, it was a tough year, and especially in the context of everything going on, uh, not being able to see each other, not being able to mourn uh, together at times and, and things. And we have people in our church and community uh, who are going through that mourning period even now as we speak. And, uh, and I thought it's necessary that we, we pause a moment and just reflect whether it's yourself or whether it's others you know or care for uh, that have lost loved ones, um, that we acknowledge, we pause, and we just mourn with them. We recognize that there's both good and there's also difficulty in this year. Um, and we remember the loved ones. We remember the best of them. We, we celebrate their life. We celebrate the grace of God over their lives. Uh, there's this quote uh, by a pastor, um, and, and, I, and I really love how he says it. And he's talking about loss, and he's talking about grief. And we understand we have a God, and, and, and we trust in him. We, we trust in the ultimate promise through his son, Jesus Christ. And so no matter how difficult things get, there's, we still have this hope. Even in the midst of you know, difficulty and in the midst of what seems like to, you know, to be a situation of no hope, even then, because we believe that God loves us, because we believe that he conveyed his ultimate communication of love through his son. And because his son, who died for our sins, was resurrected from the grave, we have this hope in him. And so uh, uh, this quote from this pastor, he says, Occasionally, we weep deeply over the life we had hoped it would be. And we all experience loss. Uh, and, and he points out that we, we need to grieve the losses. You know, we can't, we can't pretend like it didn't happen. We can't just put a spiritual patch over it and just, you know, move on. We, we need to take time to grieve the losses. 
And then he goes on to say, then wash your face. You know, after you grieve, then wash your face. And then trust God and embrace the life that you have. All right? So there is this importance and value of grieving, of recognizing and acknowledging. And, and it's okay to have questions. It's okay to have doubts. It's, it's, it's okay to even be upset. But then we ultimately submit this into our Heavenly Father and we ultimately trust that His love and His goodness uh, uh, will, will carry us through these seasons. And so he talks about you know, acknowledging the grief. You know, imagine, you know, consider the life that could have been or that you had hoped for that is no more. And then you wash your face and then you trust in God. And then you get ready for the next year and then you get ready for what is to come and then you get ready for those that need you, uh, um, you know, in their lives. Um, acknowledge what is hard Grieve the loss. Uh, you know, feel this thing of whatever will never be. And then put your trust in Him. And then put your trust in Him. And that's all we can do as we hope and believe in the resurrected Lord. Uh, we're also still in the process of contending for loved ones. We still have, you know, uh, family members or friends or loved ones or people you know uh, who are still, you know, battling ailments who are still fighting for their life and so we're still in the process not only you know mourning for those that have passed and submitting them to god but we're also still in the process of contending and and praying and 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 pouring out our hearts uh for those who are sick uh, i have dear friends and family members you know overseas and here uh, uh that are just you know praying and contending and it's it's you know on top of a difficult year it's, it's, it seems like it's closing out with with another difficult situation and so we continue to pray we, we continue to uh, uh, not give up and, and, and unceasingly contend before the Lord. But even in this, we don't stop there. Even in this, as we remember the past, you know, those lost, and as we contend for those who are fighting even now, even in the midst of this, I charge you that we are to praise God through it all. Even though you don't feel like it, even though everything seems to be stacked against you, that we still praise God through it all. We praise God through it all. We take the good from God and we also take the difficult and the bad. In Job chapter 2 verse 10 and uh, you know Job with all his conflicts and strife and you know attacks of the enemy and and all the things that went wrong and the, and the loss of loved ones and the loss of health and the loss of finances. This is his response and he says, shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? And the scriptures tells us that in all this, Job did not sin in what he said. In James chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, that God has promised to those who love him. In Job chapter uh, 1, verse 21 and 22, Job says this, he says, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the scriptures goes on to say that in all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrongdoing. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. And in the midst of all this, he says, you know, God gives and God takes away. And it's almost like this, 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 he understands that, he understands that he doesn't understand everything. He understands that, that God works, you know, beyond his understanding and capacity. And so, you know, regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances, Job says, all I can do is bless his name. All I can do is rely on God. All I can do is praise His name. God is certainly worthy. God is certainly praiseworthy. I remember uh, Pastor Sam Song, our senior pastor and founding pastor of the whole Psalmist Porch uh, Network in Hong Kong, and he was giving this account. And it, you know, when it had happened some, you know, 16 years ago, when his firstborn was, uh, uh, you know, birthed in the hospital, there was this moment of terror where they had thought that maybe it was a stillbirth, you know, uh, the, the response or reaction of the child after, after giving birth, uh, all the signs weren't there. And so there was a moment where both he 
and his wife Lisa had thought just for a moment that that maybe this was a stillbirth and this 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 just this fear came and I remember that following Sunday he came you know to church and was sharing and, and you know the, the child is healthy and you know beautiful and 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 you know just vibrant and and you know everything ended up being okay but I remember him sharing in that moment where there was that uncertainty and fear where he just started lifting up his hands and saying blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord he gives and he takes away he gives and he takes away blessed be the name of the Lord and and just just that 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 shock and reminding that even in the context of potentially such a great loss that one could have such faith in God that whether through good or through the bad, God is worthy of praise. Blessed be His name. All good things come from God. And we trust in God. And even through the difficulty, we believe that God is still trustworthy. And I just remember being so humbled by that and thinking, man, I, you know, I, I hope and I wish and I pray that I would have that type of faith. That I would have that type of faith. In 2020, uh, uh, there was the good stuff. You know, and in those moments, we have to say, man, God, you were gracious. Man, you were so good in such a year that you would still bestow such blessings upon us. In 2020, there was also the bad stuff, the difficult stuff. And, and even in that, we say to God, God, we're, we're so grateful, we're, we're so humbled that even in the midst of all this, God, that you were faithful and that you carried us in that. And so even through the good and even through the bad, you know, even through what he gave and even through what was taken, we declare the goodness of God and that He loves us, and that He has a plan for you. And so I, I wanted to close out um, you know, this year uh, recognizing and acknowledging the difficulty, not, not just racing through it and, 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 and trying to just, I don't know, act like nothing happened, and hey, you know, a new year, a new beginning. No, we, we need to pause, and we need to take a moment, and we need to reflect. And, and if you haven't had a chance to do that, you know, in the midst of all your busyness, I really encourage you, I really uh, uh, charge you to do that, to spend some time, you know, uh, carve out, you know, an hour or so if you, if, if you need to journal, if you need to just pray, and just acknowledge some of the difficulties and, and, and then submit them. Say, Lord, I, 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 I lay this at your feet, you know, and then go, go wash your face and say, Lord, I'm ready to go with you where you have, you know, where you have for me next. And just make that admonition and just make that commitment to the Lord. Um, what better way to close out the year and to start off the new year than to humble ourselves, than to humble ourselves, you know, for the things that we thought we had a handle on or a grasp on that kind of got away from us, you know, for the things that didn't work out and, and, and God worked in another way and surprisingly blessed us, you know, all, 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 everything. What better way to close out and start the new year of 2021 than to humble ourselves? And so I have uh, three points this morning, uh, uh, three ways uh, uh, you know, about fasting. And the first one is about humility. The first one is about humbling. Fasting makes us humble. When we fast, we are literally humbling ourselves. We're literally emptying ourselves and saying, God, we're we're coming to you empty-handed. You know, you know, our theme this year is about expansion. It's about making room, uh, making adjustments. There are things that God wants to bless us with, you know, pruning, cutting things out. What better way to show God that we're open and that, that we're creating space for whatever it is that He wants to do than by coming and fasting with one another and with your church and, and with your leadership. Uh, the biblical mandate, if you've never heard this before, if no one's ever told you, the biblical mandate is that, you know, we are to humble ourselves, right? If you've ever heard this prayer, oh, I'm so proud, or, or, or you know, too many things, you know, going on, and uh, uh, Lord, humble me. Lord, I, you know, I'm, I'm too good. I'm too blessed. Lord, humble me. I need, I need to be more humble, right? I, I used to think this. I used to pray this prayer all the time. You know, everything's good, and, and I'm so blessed, and and then I would say something to someone, maybe in a tone or an attitude that was prideful. And then I'd say, oh, man, you know, you know I'm so arrogant or, or you know, where, my heart's not in the right place. Lord, humble me. Lord, humble me. I, I have too much. The biblical mandate, that's actually an unbiblical prayer. You know, to pray, Lord, humble me is an unbiblical prayer. The biblical mandate, and all throughout scriptures, you'll find, um, instead of asking God 
to humble us, that we are to humble ourselves. The biblical mandate is that God requires His people to humble themselves before Him. So the mandate is on us to recognize if our hearts or our attitudes or our pride is not in the right place, and then for us to be self-aware you know, by the prompting of the Spirit, and then for us to kneel down, for us to bow our heads. We have to humble ourselves. You do not want God to humble you. If you pray this prayer, God humble me, God may answer your prayer and actually humble you, and it's probably going to be in a way that's uncomfortable. It's probably going to be in a way where, where you, know, you wish it hadn't had happened. So instead of being in this position, God, if I'm too proud or if I have too much or if my attitude is, you know, Lord, why don't you humble me? Instead of waiting for that to happen, why not us be humble and take the initiative and humble ourselves? It's a humble prayer to go before God and to say, Lord, is there anything in my spirit? Is there anything in my life? Is there anything in my relationships? Is there anything in my attitudes that is not pleasing to you? Lord, you know, please help you know, in the Holy Spirit, make these things aware to me so that I can humble myself. In Matthew chapter 23, 23 verse 12, the scriptures tells us, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. God make me humble is unscriptural, because the reply of God is always for you to humble yourself. David expressed in Psalms chapter 35, verse 13, I humbled my soul with fasting. David said, I humbled my soul with fasting. What better way to show God that we're so grateful for all that He has supplied? What better way than to show God that we're so uh, 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 hungry for more of Him than to humble ourselves, to humble our souls, with fasting. And so let's humble ourselves, church, as we close out the year for, for both the good and the bad, for what he has given and taken. Let's once again, individually, and then corporately as a body, humble ourselves, kneel our, 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 ourselves, and bow our heads before God, and make space and make room so that he can deposit and that he can expand all that he wants to do in us and through us in 2021. Uh, secondly, fasting is empowering. Fasting releases power. It's empowering. Uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, Jehoshaphat calls Judah to fasting and prayer. He calls the people in the nation to fasting and prayer. In verse 12, he says, Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. There's two key phrases in this prayer. One, he says, we are powerless. We have no power. We have no capacity. I have no weapons. I, I, I have no, you know, uh, 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 nothing I can do. There's nothing in my own hands, nothing in my own power to overcome. And then secondly, he says, we don't know what to do. Not only do we have no power, but we don't know what to do. We don't know what to turn. And so they turn to God in humility. They turn to God in prayer. And they turn to God in fasting. He didn't know what to do. He didn't have power. And so in that moment, he knows to turn to God and to seek God in fasting. And so are you powerless? Are you in a position where there's nothing within your own means and capacity to overcome? You know, do, are, you, are you confused? You, you, don't, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what you, what, what, what you should do next or what your next step is or what God is doing in the situation. You need clarity and you, you're seeking direction and guidance. Then seek the Lord in prayer and fasting. And the beauty of this is that you're not, you're not seeking the Lord individually by yourself. You're not praying by yourself, and you're not fasting by yourself. You're coming together with your community. And so you got brothers and sisters, you know, all from our Solomon's Porch Singapore community of 200, 250 people, you know, kids included, you know, coming together and praying and seeking God together. You have churches, you know, Solomon's Porches in Hong Kong, in, in New York, in Tokyo, you know, Beijing, in Shanghai, uh, our Indonesian services. Uh, all coming together for the first 21 days of the year, contending and fasting. We're all praying. We're all vested. We're all giving ourselves to the Lord. Uh, if you look at Jesus' public ministry, 
there were two important incidents. One was the baptism. The Holy Spirit came upon him in a form of a dove. And second was fasting in the wilderness. This is before uh, uh, he went out into his public ministry, before he started doing his miracles. In Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 2, the scriptures tells us that Jesus went full of the Holy Spirit. The result of the fast is that he went back to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. He went back and into Galilee and into ministry with the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was anointed. He fasted. And we see the power of the Spirit flowing through his life and ministry without hindrance. Fasting releases the power of the Holy Spirit. Fasting releases the power of the Holy Spirit, and then it transforms us, and then it transforms the world around us. Take, for example, uh, uh, the disciples. I mean, for, for you know, Jesus walking with them and the disciples having followed him uh, uh, you know, during the three years of ministry, and, and, and I've, always, I've always thought this was interesting. I, I would have always have thought that the disciples would have been more faithful I would have always thought that the disciples would have been uh, more filled with power in the actual physical presence of Jesus. You know, I would have thought that they would have done things more right, not, not always making mistakes. But you look through the New Testament and you see that the disciples are making mistakes time after time, that Jesus is rebuking them, that Jesus is, is, is correcting them. And then it culminates with, with our Lord going to the cross and then all the disciples scattering and leaving, uh, you know, Judas betraying and everyone, you know, Peter denying Jesus. I think there was only uh, John the Beloved that remained behind all the way to the end. And so it, it always boggled my mind when I contrast in the New Testament, that when the disciples were with Jesus physically, how they seemed to make all these mistakes and seemed to say all the wrong things. And then what, what was interesting is, then after Jesus' death and resurrection, it's almost like a you know, completely night and day exchange. And it's almost like the disciples, when they were walking with Jesus, versus after Jesus was resurrected and, and elevated uh, uh, in, you know, into heaven in the presence of God, then all of a sudden you see this, this, this miraculous, incredible transformation and, and Peter and the disciples are, are walking out in faith and people are being healed and they're doing all the right things and they're saying all the right things. And, and so for, for the longest time, I, I didn't get it. I was like, how can it be that they're stronger and more spirit-filled you know, after Jesus' resurrection and then while they were actually physically with Jesus? Because in, in, in any situation, listen, if you've ever been in a tough situation, uh, or in a hard, in hard place, you know, we say, often say things like, oh, but if, if only the Lord were here, if God were right here, if Jesus were right here, then, then I wouldn't fall into this temptation. If Jesus were right here, then I would have more faith. But when you look at the New Testament, you know, all the follies of the disciples happened when they were with Jesus physically, but all the incredible things happened and all their faithfulness and power you know, seem to exude in and through them after Jesus had departed from them. So, so what is going on? Right? And the only difference that I can find, the only thing that can help me understand you know, the contrast in their faithfulness, the contrast in their power, is the fact that after Jesus' death and resurrection, the power of the Holy Spirit was released upon His disciples, and upon His people, upon, upon His followers. And so even in the, so to say, physical absence of Jesus, the very presence and heart of God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit was now indwelling and living in them. And so they were able to move and to walk and to live in power. And that church is what you and I need. We need the indwelling presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And one of the ways that we can have this breakthrough, have this revelation, have this pouring out of God's heart, is when we humble ourselves and when we pray and when we fast. There might be something that you're just locked in. There might be something that you're stuck in. There might be something, you know, uh, there's a word that God has for you in 2021 and nobody knows what that is but God and, and God is readily waiting and wanting to release that. And how would you know that unless you contended, unless you sowed in, unless, unless you show God how desperate and how hungry we are for Him to do the things that he has called and purposed us to do, to bless us, but to also bless those around us. And so uh, uh, fasting and prayer releases, it empowers us, it releases the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Fasting can serve as the spiritual dynamite, the spiritual explosive you know, power that projects, that launches us, uh, um, launches the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? Man, we, we all need more of Jesus. We all need more of the Holy Spirit. We all need more of God's revelation and God's power in our homes, in our workplaces, in our relationships, in our minds, in our spirit, in, in, our, in our physical bodies. We, we need more of Jesus. We need more of his presence. We need more of his power. And when we humble ourselves and when we pray and when we fast, we're literally, it's like we're creating the space and capacity so that God can show us himself in this. Uh, thirdly and lastly, um, fasting brings us closer to God. Fasting is encouraging. Now I know it's it's physically difficult. I get it. I, you know I can't water it down or sh you know sugarcoat it. It's it's hard. You know around day four, day five, it gets tough. You know second week and man, it's it is a battle like no battle on every level. Physically, it's a battle. Emotionally, it's it's probably one of the most difficult battles spiritually as well. Uh, um, and so, but at the same time, it's encouraging. You know, there are others that are praying for us, and we're praying for them. We're praying together. There are others that are fasting. You know, we're, we're in solidarity and, and together as one body, and we're contending for each other, contending for our city, content, contending for our nation, and contending for the world. It brings us closer to God. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13 to 14, it says, When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. God says, the scriptures tells us, Jeremiah reminds us, that if we seek God with all of our hearts, that he will be found, that God would reveal himself to us. So then the question is, how hungry are we for him? How much, you know, as much as we say we want, but how much truly are we seeking him? Because God tells us, if we seek him with all of our heart, then he will be found. God will bring revelation. And, uh, you know, when we fast and, and, and when we put our physical selves kind of on the back burner or make that a secondary priority and make the spirit and seeking God the, the first priority, God hears, God sees. And, and God sees that there are people, there are individuals that are so desperate from so hungry from calling out to him physically, God will answer. Uh, Joel expressed in Joel chapter 2, verse 12, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all of your heart with fasting. So even, even God says, or you know, this prophetic word, you know, return to me. God, you know, the Lord is saying, return to me, come back to me with all of your heart with fasting. There's some to, there, there seems to be this connection. Fasting is synonymous with coming to God with all your heart. Right, really laying the you know the basic necessities, the, the basic rights of our of our of our living, and and putting that at the altar and, and and laying it at the foot, to God that translates to wow they're not eating, wow they're they're fasting, man they're seeking me with all their heart, right? So regardless of how you feel emotionally, you know detached or distanced, if you go through the act physically. You know, with the intent, with the intent, no matter how hardened or how numb or how distant, with the intent, your desire is to seek God and get closer with God. When you do this with this motive, God sees it as you seeking Him with all of your heart. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart with fasting. The focus of fasting, if you've never heard this before, the focus of fasting is not the fast itself. It's not about how you fast or, or what you fast. The focus of our fast, our 21 days, 21 days, you know, tithing that, giving that, giving our best. The, you know, most people will spend the first three weeks and, you know, intensely and focus and this is what I want to do this year and these are my plans. No, we're putting all that on the back burner, secondary. We're coming to God first. We're giving to God first. And then we're, we're submitting these things secondly. And when we do this, it shows God that we're putting Him first. The, the focus of fasting is not fasting itself. The focus of fasting is getting closer to God. 
The focus of fasting is getting closer to God. We need more of God. We need more of his love. We need more of his presence. We need more of his direction and guidance. Someone, someone was telling me, one of uh, our pastors uh, uh, you know, in, in our Solomon's Porch Network, um, that he felt like this year in 2020, he was constantly uh, uh, on his back leg. He was constantly having to respond to things, you know, uh, uh, you know reactions to circumstances or to events. And, and so the, the commitment that he communicated with us is, you know, in, in, in uh, 2021, I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to be led by God. I don't want to just react or respond, and I don't want my emotions to be dictated by circumstances. And, and so this pastor committed to doing a 40-day fast. And so he started earlier, and he's going to end on the you know, 24th with all the churches worldwide. Um, and so this idea that, that we want to hear from God and we want to get guidance from God, we don't want to respond to God, and we want to have this sensitivity and intimacy and connection. And so the whole focus of fasting, really whatever it is you fast or forever, for however long it is you fast, the whole point, primary focus is to get closer with God. We know that if we get closer to God and that we get intimate with God and our relationship is personal with God, we know that God will walk with us throughout the whole year. We know that God will give us guidance through every circumstance and situation. We know that God, even for the things we ask for that we think are good for us, but God may actually have something better for us, would navigate and direct us through that in relationship. Ultimately, we trust in God. And so the focus of our fast is to get closer to God. Are you willing to give up? Here's, here's the question. You know, some, as some of us might be on the fence. Some of you are, this is like round seven, round eight. You know, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the same intensity. Some of you guys might be hearing this for the first time. You know, some of you guys are hardcore believers. Some of you guys are seekers and, and wondering you know, about this Christianity thing. And, and it's, it's, it's incredible. We've had people of all walks, and of all stages, and all, all you know, uh, uh, wherever they are in their faith, whether they're seeking, whether they're longtime believers. We've had non-believers come, or pre-believers, right? People who haven't yet given their lives to the Lord. And they'll fast, and they'll join, and they'll participate, and, and God will move. You know, and then at a later time, God will reveal, and then you know, they'll, they'll come to salvation and faith. And so we've had all sorts of incredible testimonies of people of all walks of, uh, of uh, uh, stages in life and faith coming and encountering God. But the key question here, and, and the question that has to be posed to all of us, is simply this, and, and you don't have to answer to me, you don't have to answer you know, to a friend or your spouse, or this is, this is be between you and God. And, and listen, I'm just, I'm just a messenger. And so take this to heart. The question is, are you willing to give up for a period of time? Or not, not forever, not for the whole year. Are you willing, yes or no, in your heart of hearts, are you willing to give up for a period of time, for 21 days, the legitimate pleasures of this world? the rightful and legitimate pleasures of food and leisure and comfort? Are you willing for a season, for three weeks, for 21 days, the beginning, you know, 8%, 7% of the year unto God, are you willing to give up the legitimate, rightful pleasures that we're entitled to for a season, lay them down before God so that we can experience the extreme pleasures of knowing God? Are we willing to give up something we love, something we value, something we treasure for a period of time so that we can experience the extreme pleasures of knowing God? Knowing God. Imagine God gives you a word. Imagine God gives you a vision. Imagine in the midst of this prayer, He answers a prayer. Imagine that He has something that He wants to reveal and, 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 and you're not even sure what that is. And, but you know that God has something for you. God has a word for you. God has a clear directive for you. And it's not about, God, this is what I want to do, and so can you bless it? But what if God has something for you? What if God has a word for you? What if God has a clear directive for you? And, and all it took was for us for 21 days to say, God, I'm here. God, I'm hungry. I'm physically hungry. I'm dying. But I'm more hungry for you. I'm more hungry to know your heart. I'm, I'm more hungry to know what your plans are. And we simply came open-hearted and, and, and expanded ourselves and, and made room and stretched ourselves. And then God would have give you a word. And that that word just resonated in your spirit. And whatever 
words or plans you had for yourself, as, as soon as you got that word, you, you, would, you would ditch all your other plans. You would, you would, ditch, you would rewrite your calendar. You would, you would restart the introduction to the year and, and say, man, this is from God. This is God's mandate. I'm all in. I'm, God, wherever you're going, that's where I'm going. Imagine that God has a word for you. And He does. He does. He knows you by name. He loves you individually. He knows you every, you know, every detail of your past, of you know, everything that's brought you here now. And, and He has a plan and a purpose for you for 2021. It's, it's like a gift. He has it. And He's ready to release it to you. If we would come before Him and humble ourselves with all of our hearts, the Scripture says, in fasting. And so what this, I mean, you know, I know it's tough. I know it's not easy, but but at the same time, I get excited. I, I get so excited for you guys. I get so excited for those of you who are doing it for the first time. I get so excited for those of you who've done it for the eighth or ninth year, because whatever God has for you this year is different than whatever he had for you last year, whatever he had for you, you know, three years ago. And so our job is to contend and to humble ourselves and get hungry and to seek after God for his word, for his deposit, for his direction. And in addition to all this, we contend and pray for our loved ones. We pray for our sick ones. We pray for breakthrough in our workplaces, in our relationships, and all those things too. God, God is readily wanting to bless. But the first and foremost priority is that the blessing is God himself. God is the blessing. If we have God and we got none of the things that we ask for, we would still be blessed. Amen? Amen? Man, we have to believe that. But if we have God and we, we give him all our hearts, there's nothing that a loving father would not release to his children when our hearts, when, when, he, when, when the conveying of our hearts to him is that we love him with all of our hearts, right? It's just a matter of timing. It's just a matter of circumstances. And, and even with timing and things, we completely trust that to the Lord. Are you willing to give up for a season, for 21 days, the legitimate pleasures of the world so that we can experience the extreme pleasure of knowing God? This is the question. What a special opportunity we have. I'm excited for the church. I'm excited for you. I'm excited you know, for the testimonies that are going to come out of this. And um, man, I, I, hope, I hope you guys would join us. Um, just a couple quick notes. Uh, uh, you know, remember, when we're fasting, as, we're, as we start off on, on Sunday, the, the, you know, the following Sunday, uh, fasting without prayer is dieting. Fasting without prayer is dieting. You can't, we're not just not eating. Right? But we're using that time to spend with God in prayer. Right? So the focus is not just abstaining, but the focus is you know, getting quality time with God. Uh, and so I you know, challenge and charge you guys, you know, start making preparations. Um, you know, start start uh, 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 making a game plan for what you're going to fast, uh, what you're going to do during that fast. You know, a lot of people in the, in the marketplace, in the office, will spend that hour that they would have been eating. Instead, they'll have a list of things and start praying for people and others, not, not just ourselves. In fact, I would say, uh, uh, don't pray just for yourself, but pray for others. And, and if everyone is praying for others, then you yourself will be prayed for. Um, just a quick quote here from uh, Max Licato on, on the idea of prayer. And I understand that for some of us, prayer is new. I understand but for some of us, you know, prayer seems foreign and doesn't always feel like God answers or doesn't even always feel like God hears. But this is what Max Licato says. He says, our prayers may be awkward, our attempts may be you know, even feeble in our eyes, but since the power in prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, it does make a difference. Right? So no matter the mode or how you feel, the power isn't in the way we pray. The power isn't in what we say. The power is in ultimately who hears our prayers. So we continue to give supplication. We continue to make petition. We continue to contend and pray continually because we know ultimately that our prayers in the hands of God is a far better thing than the power of our ability to pray. Um, so keep praying uh, whenever and wherever you can. Uh, um, I mentioned, you know, uh, uh, real quickly, there's three types of fast. A general fast, which is no food, um, um, but you can still take water. There's the absolute fast I mentioned a couple weeks ago. No water, no food. If you're going to do no water, no food, you have to let your house church leader know. You have to let me know. Uh, we want to pray for you, but also keep tabs on you physically. Uh, make sure everything's okay. And then most of us do some form of a partial fast. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of us do liquids, uh, a particular type of liquid, uh, uh, 
you know, fruit juice or, or vegetable juice or, or some of us do smoothies or some of us do one meal a day. You know, whatever that is, that's between you and God. Uh, I think the key here is that it shouldn't be like a cakewalk. It shouldn't be like, you know, oh yeah, I can do this. It's, you know, it should be something you feel like you can't do. And so whatever you did last year, you know, even if we failed and had to start over, you know, up it and, 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 and try to do something that's, that you know is not physically possible on your own. And make sure to tell as many people as possible, or not as many, but at least your spiritual overseers, your house church leaders and such, and, and you know, accountability partners, so that they can pray for you during this time. And then uh, lastly, and then I'll close, uh, uh, homework, you know, preparation. Uh, we got uh, one more week before the fast. Uh, these are questions that kind of like a, an internal spiritual checklist you want to make sure. One, am I confident that this desire to fast is God-given? Right? You know, I don't want to just go through the motions. I don't want to just do it because other people are doing it. Right? I, I really want to get directive. I really want to have the sense that this is from God. What type of fast does He want me to undertake? Okay? So don't just do a fast because you know, everyone in your house is just doing this type of fast. You go before God personally and ask Him. And whatever you feel He's asking you to fast, fast. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, I, I think that's the best way. And then if you need to, you know, one week into it or a few days into it, up it, you know, up the intensity of the level a little bit, then you can go back to God and say, Lord, do you want me to, you know, uh, in intensify the fast a little bit? And just keep dialoguing with God in that way. Uh, uh, the scripture tells us that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Um, God was leading him. The Father was leading him. And so uh, uh, that's how he fasted. Second, are your motives right? Is there any hidden desire to impress others? Is there like a spiritual badge of honor, so to say, or, you, you know, are you, do you have the tendency of telling people I'm doing a water fast or telling people how intense your fast is for you? You know, I would say just keep it general in terms of communication uh, uh, for those of us who may struggle with that. Um, your father who sees in secret will reward you. Uh, and so then the question sometimes comes up, well, aren't we supposed to fast in secret anyways? Uh, in the New Testament, doesn't, doesn't Jesus instruct us when you fast, don't be like everyone that makes it public? Yes, absolutely. If you're fasting by yourself, you know, keep it to yourself and before God and don't make it public to everyone. But there are clearly scriptural mandates uh, uh, for the nation or a community in which a spiritual leader will call a fast. And that's what this is. This is a corporate call to fast for the whole church SP here in Singapore and, and uh, uh, in our nation and, and, and all over the world as well. And so this is a corporate fast. Everyone knows we're fasting. Uh, you just don't have to get into the details of, of what you're fasting. Uh, three, what are my spiritual objectives in fasting? Right, between now and next week, you want to you wanna get clear what you're contending for, what you're praying for. Again, I encourage you, make sure the priority is getting close with God. Make sure the priority, the, the ultimate blessing is being with God. And then as a secondary you know, uh, uh, priority, then the, the things you're contending and praying for, for a loved one, for breakthrough and such things. Fourthly and lastly, am I determined above all else to minister to the Lord? Am I determined above all else to minister to the Lord in the fast? Am I stealing away time with God? It says, the scriptures tells us that they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. It wasn't just fasting, but they were also worshiping the Lord. They were also praying. They were spending quality time, just quality, you know, good time, like at a retreat, alone time with the Lord. And so with this, you know, as we close out the year and, and, and reflecting both the good and the bad, what has been given, what has been taken, as, as we ponder these things and as we gear up for the new year, you know, with this, you know, with our fast, Solomon's porch, this is your pastor and I'm, and I'm inviting you and I'm charging you and I'm imploring you to join us to get on your mark and to spiritually get set. And then on January 3rd, the whole church, we're going to say go. And we're all going to dive in together, a deep dive into God's presence, into fasting, into giving God all of our hearts. And uh, man, I would just love for every single one of you to be a part of that. I wouldn't want anyone to miss that and what God has for you on the other side of that, at the other end of that. And so Solomon's Porch just want to bless you guys. Um, bless you guys with a you know, wonderful end of uh, 2020 and may the presence of God and the favor of God be with you. And as we make this transition into what is unknown, into what is possible, into what it means you know, from death to come to resurrection, uh, may the Lord bless you as you take that step of faith into the new year. 
And uh, let me just bless you guys. Uh, Father, we just thank you, Lord, uh, for this word and for this message. And I pray, Jesus, that you would uh, shift gears in our hearts uh, to prepare ourselves, Lord God, for the new year. God, we humbly submit to you everything in 2020, both the good and the bad. And God, we praise you both in the good and in the bad. God, we, we, we trust in you because of your son, because you, because you rose again from the dead, because, you, because it pleased you to let him go on the cross and to take our sins of, you know, uh, for us and, and to the grave. And then in your power and love, you brought him back from death into life. Because of the hope we have in Jesus, God, we have hope in all things. And so, Lord, we, we lay to rest 2020. God, and then we look to you in hope, in the resurrection for 2021. And all that is possible. And all that you have purposed. And God, we humble ourselves. And we seek you with all of our hearts, individually and as a church body, with fasting and prayer. God, would you bring your church together, especially as we begin to meet together in person again. God, would your spirit be poured out upon us. May your presence be poured out upon us. May the power of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us so that we can walk in your presence, in your power, in your love. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace and shalom this day forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Uh, have a happy new year and we'll see you guys in the new year. Uh, we have a handful of people that would love to pray for you after service. There's some information here uh, for you on that. And so bless you guys and stick around. We have a, a handful of other announcements as well. We'll see you guys next year.